this video we are going to be talking about um, cell organelles. So this will go with chapter 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, and 4-6. And so, kind of taking a departure from the biochem stuff, this is going to be pretty um, straightforward. One of the main things that we're going to look at this section, like the name suggests, is organelles. And there's really just um, a list presented in the book um, that will be what you should spend your time looking at and knowing their structure and their function and then what cell types like animal, plant, or prokaryotic cells are they found in. So this is a good example of organelles that you should know kind of after these sections in the animal cell and in the plant cell. And all of these are kind of represented in a diagram on page 72 and 73 in your book. Um, and I would look at that page more than anything else from these sections because what you're going to want to know is the function and what cells have them. And so 72 and 73 kind of look like this picture and this picture in your book, an animal cell and a plant cell. And so the numbered organelles are the ones that you want to study and be familiar with as far as their function and the cell types that they can be found in. So we already talked about the nucleus and the extracellular matrix in, um, for two and three. So we'll start off with the endomembrane system. So the endomembrane system is really all organelles that are derived from the nuclear envelope or the endoplasmic reticulum. So all organelles that sprout from any of those two. And this endomembrane system is kind of um, a passageway or a path of interconnected membranes. So just like the cell and the nucleus is surrounded by membranes, this is just a pathway of interconnected membranes or tubes that transport substances around the cell and into the cell and out of the cell. Just like the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane, the endomembrane system is made out of phospholipids and um, includes the ER, smooth ER, Golgi, vesicles, peroxisomes, and lysosomes. So the rough and smooth, the endoplasmic reticulum is kind of the first and the biggest part, and it acts as a road for substances to move around in the cell. And um, it's composed of like tubes or of membranes. So kind of back in this picture, all in here is kind of the path that a molecule or a substance would take through these tubes of membrane throughout this endoplasmic reticulum. The rough ER, particularly, is attached to the nuclear envelope and then um, transitions into the smooth ER, which is the, which is the latter section of the rough ER. And we call it the rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has ribosomes kind of embedded in it like little studs and ribosomes, remember, make the proteins. So if we go back to this page, this section right here is the rough ER and these are the proteins. And the rough ER, since these proteins are embedded in the ER, it are um, mainly proteins that get made to be excreted. So proteins that go out of the cell, like enzymes and membrane proteins will be part of the plasma membrane. So really proteins that are going to be shuttled out of the cell or become part of the cell are in the rough ER. 
the spoon ER has no ribosomes that are bound onto it. So here, this part is the smooth ER. And it is in charge of making lipids and kind of breaking apart carbohydrates. In addition, it creates some detoxifying enzymes for the like liver. So liver cells have a very large smooth ER. Um, as well as kidney cells. And the smooth ER also shuttles t things to and from the Golgi in vesicles. So back in this picture, here we have some vesicles um, budding off of the smooth ER to go to the Golgi to get processed. Rough ER makes proteins to send out, to be excreted, go to other parts. Smooth ER kind of synthesizes lipids, breaks apart carbohydrates, and creates detoxifying enzymes, shuttles things to the Golgi. So here's another picture of the rough and the smooth ER. Next is the Golgi apparatus, which really uh, converts, refines, and packages the products of the ER and the nucleus. So it's the packaging plant. It takes things in here in the cis face. It's the part of the Golgi that faces the smooth ER. And it processes those proteins, refining them, finalizing them as they move this way to the transphase, in which case they butt off in these vesicles, and the transphase faces the, um, the membrane, the plasma membrane, and these vesicles can bring the packaged proteins out to go into other cells, or they can go around and go back into other places in the same cell. Um, and besides kind of preparing and packaging the proteins, the Golgi also synthesizes some carbohydrates. So it's really the packaging plant processes different proteins and things made in the smooth and the rough ER and sends them where they need to go. Lastly, in the endomembrane system, there's vesicles, lysosomes, and peroxisomes. Now, vesicles are just basically transporters. They kind of butt off of butt off of the trans face of the Golgi, so the Golgi that's part of the Golgi facing the plasma membrane, and they can store like food, um, or they can store um, digestive enzymes, or different things that they need to shuttle around. So they are the shuttles move and transfer substances to where they need to go. Lysosomes are special vesicles that carry digestive enzymes. So these digestive enzymes they use to digest like macromolecules, make them into their smaller monomers to uh, kind of dissolve foreign invaders or if different cell organelles die, kind of dissolve them as well. They're in a membrane and that's to protect all those digestive enzymes from spilling out into the cell and dissolving other parts of the cell. One specific type of lysosome is a peroxisome because it contains peroxidase. It oxidizes and destroys different substances and turns them into peroxides, which it then neutralizes because peroxides are harmful for to cells. So peroxidase or peroxisomes are also found in the high in the liver where they oxidize alcohol. So that is how your liver metabolizes alcohol as the peroxisomes in, in the liver. Two important energy organelles not part of the endomembrane system is one, the mitochondria, and that's our powerhouse. It's found in all eukaryotic cells, even in plant cells, and it creates ATP or energy from precursor molecules. So like lipids, glucose, ETC, like those macromolecules. It 
the important feature is has this double membrane, a thick outer membrane and this convoluted inner membrane with this inner membrane space in between. And the space in between the two membranes is what's used or is very helpful in creating the potential that creates ATP, and we'll talk about that later. Something really special about the mitochondria is it contains, it has its own DNA and ribosomes. The DNA is specific to uh, creating the different um, proteins that it needs that it um, assembles of the ribosomes and the ribosomes assemble respiration enzymes. So enzymes used in cellular respiration. And this is really interesting. It has its own ribosomes and its own DNA and they think that came about through a process called endosymbiosis. So this is when they thought a long time ago when eukaryotic cells first arose, they didn't have any mitochondria. And these mitochondria actually back then were prokaryotic organisms. And over time, eukaryotic organisms engulfed these prokaryotic mitochondria and they became genetically incorporated with the eukaryotic cells and became the mitochondria. And that explain why they have their own DNA, their own ribosomes, and they have a double membrane of their very own. Chloroplasts also came about via endosymbiosis from photosynthetic prokaryotes. They're also double membranes, and they're only found in plants. They are where photosynthesis happens. They turn H2O, water, and light into glucose, into food. So this chloroplast is filled with a fluidy substance all over called the stroma. And then these little discs called thylakoids that are stacked up into these stacks called granar, granum. And on the inside of them, these, these thylakoids are the Chlor the chlorophyll, the, the pigments that um, actually do the photosynthesis, that turn the light energy into food. And just to point out, just like the mitochondria, a chloroplast has its own DNA and its own ribosomes. It used to be a prokaryotic cell. until millions of years and billions of years ago, it became incorporated, engulfed in a eukaryote, and their DNA merged. So two different endosymbiotic organelles, chloroplasts and mitochondria. The ribosomes are important. They are the part that makes the proteins. So they're found in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. And they're found bound to the nuclear membrane in the rough ER and in the free cytoplasm. And four, just like what we talked about, in chloroplasts and mitochondria. They're made of two subunits, so like this picture has a pure big portion and a small portion that come together when we're doing protein synthesis, which we'll talk about later. But be aware they're made of two subunits. And prokaryotic ribosomes kind of look a little different. They have a smaller, large, and a smaller, small subunit. And ribosomes can either be bound ribosomes. They are bound to like the ER or the nuclear membrane or the plasma membrane. And they, they make proteins that are mainly for use in the cell or to be excreted by the cell. Sorry, those are free ribosomes, I'm sorry. So free ribosomes, sorry for that confusion, that are floating freely around in the cytoplasm make mainly proteins for use in the same cell. 
whereas bound ribosomes to bound to the nuclear envelope or the ER or the plasma membrane create proteins mainly for excretion or to incorporate in the plasma membrane. Bound ribosomes send in the protein those proteins out. That's why it's attached to the plasma membrane, so it's a quick pathway out. Free ribosomes, we're going to use those for different things inside the cell. Last, there's the cytoskeleton, and it's, like it says, the skeleton is the support or backbone. It gives it structure. It's kind of like a wire mesh if you ever made paper mache. It kind of supports what you put on top of it. It allows organelles to move. So um, part of the cytoskeleton, these big tubes called the microtubules, have a, a protein on them that attaches to all the different organelles, kind of like you see in this picture, attaching to all the organelles. And when energy is used, these receptor proteins can move along the microtubule and move the organelles. So all the cytoskeleton is made up of proteins. They are large proteins, the microtubules like that are connected to vesicles or different organelles, intermediate or microfilaments that are the smallest, and intermediate filaments. So they kind of hold things in place. They keep the shape of the cell, allow the cell to move around, and allow for organelles to move. Kind of lastly, we have the centrosome and the centriole. So microtubules grow out of this organelle called the centrosome. And it looks like this picture over here. It's kind of like a star shape made out of nine microtubules. And there's two centrioles, which are these individual structures, in the centrosome, this round circle. And they are basically where the cytoskeleton grows out of. And in cell division, these centrioles orchestrate um, the cell dividing into two by manipulating the microtubules in the cytoskeleton. They also are sometimes attached to these long projections out of the cell called flagella or cilia. Now, flagella are the long whip-like structures that come out of a cell and it beats back and forth kind of like a sperm tail and they allow the cell to move and these microtubules of the cytoskeleton that are attached to the flagella move back and forth expanding contracting to make this whip-like motion. These cilia, these hair-like um, projections are a lot smaller, move in the same way but they kind of instead are more receptor, they mediated, they are uh, detect movement in the outside and they also help the cell to stick or adhere to its surroundings. So that is it for a uh, really brief on our organelles. If you have any questions, let me know, but um, use this, your book and your sheet to help review the structures and functions of these organelles.